After about three years of silence, today we're going to be talking about the Glock 21 and revisiting it in its updated capacity for me and for my operations. Okay guys, so today, like I said, we're taking a look at the Glock 21 and my updated uh, lifestyle with this handgun. Now, back about three years ago, I did a video that is fairly popular talking about why I carry a Glock 21 every day. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't quite live up to the truth anymore. I do not carry a Glock 21 every day, and <clears throat> here is why. Now, the thing is with this Glock 21, it is a great pistol, it's a fantastic pistol, but it is full size. So, it's not the most convenient or easy gun to carry every day and for every situation. It works well in some capacities, like we will get into, but it's just not the best pistol for me anymore <clears throat> relegating to an everyday or regarding to an everyday carry type of situation. Once again, it is a great pistol and for a 45, I think it does an amazing job at soaking up recoil and it has a great capacity for a great price. I mean, you can get these things easily anywhere from $450 to $650, depending on which generation and which model you're going after. They are great pistols and they are definitely a time-tested piece of Glock that continues to exist and perform very well to this day. However, like I said, for everyday carry, a full-sized 45 caliber handgun is not quite realistic. So if you guys have been around the channel for a little bit, you'll know that my current everyday carry handgun uh, is, is a Springfield Compact RO or Range Officer, which is a pretty small, pretty tiny 1911 that I appendix carry. So I've obviously made quite a bit of a transition uh, from handguns going from a full size 45 to a very compact 9mm. <clears throat> and the reason goes back to how I carry. Uh, back when I first made that video of why I carry a Glock 21 every day, it was very much a I carry open carry, or I was carrying open carry, and it made a lot of sense that if I was going to open carry, that I might as well open carry something that isn't a small little compact 9mm, but I might as well go with a full sized uh, handgun and in a pretty good caliber. In addition to this, when I made that video, not to say that I don't adventure like I am right now, but I didn't. It, uh, but I do, or I don't adventure as much as I used to in that time. Back when I was, back three years when I made that video, I was adventuring pretty much every day, spending a lot of time out in the woods. And it made a lot of sense to have something that was capable of stopping, stopping threats that were not humans. Things such as bears or wolves. And once again, the 45 with a plus P loading like this, makes a lot of sense for that type of situation. So that is why I chose the Lock 21 for everyday carry back then. Now, like I said, I spent quite a bit more time in the city and quite a bit more time concealed carrying, so this is not very applicable. However, in its new capacity, this gun is still definitely a part of my regimen and it falls in line, in balance, with my 44 Magnum, which currently right now is getting surfaced, so I don't have it, but when I do have my 44, I will rotate between the Glock 21 and 45 ACP, once again, with plus P loads, or I will go with my 44 Magnum, depending on where I'm going exactly and what type of animals I'm expecting to encounter. Now, out here, this is just a pretty generic place to go out and uh, film and and doesn't necessarily warrant the 44 magnum stopping power but i like to have something in case of a rogue moose or in case of some type of rogue animal that would like to hurt me or harm me and in that case this 45 acp is certainly up for the challenge and once again is a fantastic handgun that i do enjoy carrying when i do carry it and 13 plus 1 for capacity is amazing and overall does a great job at serving me well and helping me adventure safely. So overall, like I was saying, this gun has primarily been relegated to adventuring and being a balance between my 44 Magnum revolver and having a good solid slide action for the times when I either don't want to carry or need something a little bit different than the 44 Magnum revolver. 
So overall, while I no longer carry the Glock 21 every day, I still absolutely love this handgun. And I think that the Glock 21, along with the Glock 20, are two of the most underrated Glock models that do a fantastic job. And if you're looking a fantastic job with capacity, controllability, and price point. And if you are looking for a Glock that is more geared or oriented towards the woodlands or the outdoors, I would highly encourage taking a look at a Glock 21 or Glock 20. Especially, I'd, either, I'd recommend taking a look at the Glock 20 chambered in 10 mil or the Glock 21, which can be chambered in 45 ACP or 460 Roland, which is a fantastic way of making this gun super outdoor capable. This one still is just chambered in 45 ACP, but it still is pretty capable, especially with a plus P loading like this. So guys, that is my update. I felt like I had to do some form of update for this gun because it's been quite a few years and I still really enjoy this handgun. And like I said, I do love carrying it. It's just that I don't carry it every day. Anyways, guys, this is a great model of Glock and I'm gonna get back to my adventures. As always, God bless and I'm out.